So I'm going to use this picture as the subject of my pointillist painting. The pointillist uses only dots, and the tools that I'm going to use are Q-tips and some poster paints or tempera paints like this. And I have a whole rainbow of colors here to choose from, and you could use anything that has a small point on it. You could use a brush and just use the tip. You could use a fingertip. Um, you could also use the end of an old pencil, the eraser end. So let's begin. Now that I have my yellow shape in, and notice that I've left spaces and things are mostly the shape of dots, um, I'm going to start layering the next color. So I'm going to move on to just a little bit of orange. There are some spots where the yellow is a little bit more orangey, so I'm going to put a little bit of orange in there. And each time I use one of my Q-tips, I'm going to put it on some kind of a dish and just keep them separated so I can keep going back to them if I need to. So in this case, I'm really going to have a separate paintbrush for every color. Um, so this is another good reason to use Q-tips. Now I'm going to move on to another color. Uh, this time I'm going to use a little bit of green. When I look at my lemon, I can see some of the spots look maybe a little bit more green to me, where they're reflecting some of the blue. And of course you can just have fun with your colors. You don't have to make it like a photograph. That is not the goal of this kind of painting. Um, we're creating the illusion of different colors by overlapping. Now I'm going to do something that seems a little bit crazy. I'm going to go pick this color, purple, which in this case is the complete opposite of yellow. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I'm trying to make something that looks more like a shadow. Let's look at the original photo again. So here there are shadows on my lemon. And shadows tend to be sort of a grayish tone. So I'm going to use that purple to create the illusion of a little bit of gray. And it's also just a fun, lively way to uh, play with the shadows that are in a picture by picking the color that is opposite on the color wheel. Notice that I'm not completely covering up the other dots. I'm going to let all the colors blend together in our eyes when we look at them, or in our brain. Where I think the shadow is lighter, I will spread the color out a little bit more. So I will make my dots a little further apart where I think the shadow is lighter. Now I'm going to work on the background. I'm going to come around my lemon with this blue towel and it has some patterns on it, but I won't do those until I've put in the main color. So again, I'm gonna to try to get the lightest color in there, and I'm gonna build it up and make it darker where I see the folds, and then later where I see pattern, perhaps, um, around this lemon, and also these deeper shadows that are here. So now I'm gonna be using uh, some blues and maybe a little bit of green, um, and then eventually I might use a darker blue and I might even use a little bit of orange to make the dark spots inside of the blue areas because blue and orange are opposites, just the way yellow and purple are opposites. And it might help to create this little shadow in our brain. I'm going to begin overlapping some of these dots where I see the dark, darker spots. I'm still going to try not to get rid of all the white spaces. So I'm just going to begin overlapping where I think my cloth in the background is a little bit darker. 
looking at what I'm doing and I'm looking for the darker areas and I'm leaving the lighter areas just the way they are. So we're putting a little less white space between the dots by overlapping, but I'm still just making dots. And that's the key to this pointillism. You're always just making some kind of a dot or point. There's absolutely no rule to it being a perfect dot. You can make that the way that you personally would like it to be. But try not to cover up all of your space. All right, time to get just a little bit darker. So I'm gonna to go to my next darker shade of blue. Now, I don't wanna use this as much as I used my light color. So now I'm lo just looking at the shadows. So there, I will be avoiding some areas. So now we're going to use the opposite color. Opposite of blue is orange in our, we call that the complement. And we're going to use that in just the deepest, darkest places to create a bit of a shadow effect. So I'm going to do that down in here. And when I look at my photograph, I'm just looking to see where the shadows are. And something that will help you when you're looking at a photograph, trying to figure out where the shadows are, is just to squint your eyes at it. And the shapes of the shadows become much more obvious to you. So I'm just spreading out a little bit of orange in the very darkest parts. Get right up against the edge of my lemon. Okay, well that's going pretty well so far. Let's look back at the original. So again, the idea here is not to make a painting that looks exactly like our photograph. I'm just using this for my idea. And speaking of things in the picture here, in the background I have this uh, piece of fabric with a pattern on it, but it's all white and little shadows. And I'd like the background of my painting to be a little more interesting. And uh, I have some other colors here that I can use, so I'm going to pretend that that's a different color, and I think I'm going to use some brighter colors to create this background back here. I may still use the pattern that I see, but I'm going to use a different set of colors and just have some fun with it. Um, so let's see what happens. I'm gonna call this lemon on a blue mountain with a sunset. In reality, I was looking at this little photograph for my inspiration and I noticed how my towel underneath the lemon really started to look like a mountain to me when I was painting and squeezing my eyes and looking at these shadows. It really started to look like a mountain. And since I'm doing pointillism, it's definitely going to turn into something else, as you can see here. And I think that that's a lot of fun. When I was making decisions about the last stage of my artwork, I decided to choose warm colors for the background, since I had used so many cool colors on my mountain shape. And I think that makes a nice contrast. And when I was deciding which colors to use and how to use them, I began with my lightest color, yellow, which is usually what I do when I'm painting, is to start with my lightest color. And then I came in with a little bit of orange. Once I had decided to do the yellow, I decided I was gonna stick with warm colors. So I spread out a little bit of orange and I paid attention to my shadows here. Um, wherever I saw a darker spot in my photograph, I added a little bit more of that color in that spot. And then for fun, I went with pink 
to uh, put on these little shapes and swirls that are on this piece of fabric in the background, and, and that's actually a curtain. Um, and of course, if I name it uh, Lemon on a Blue Mountain at Sunset, uh, someone else might be convinced that there was actually a sunset involved, but now you know the truth. Uh, and that is one of the fun things as an artist that you get to do. You can make it up as you go along. You can uh, respond to the material that you're using and change your artwork uh, because you're having fun with the material and you like the way it's working. And you can turn one thing into another. I hope you'll try pointillism. You can try it with any kind of paint at all. Uh, you can even do it just with one color by overlapping dots to see what you get. Have fun!